Everyone, good morning. As King David pronounced very loudly, I was glad when they invited me to come into the house of the Lord. So I am glad that you have invited me. i am um, been here now for a few Sundays. This is my last Sunday for a while. I am not a candidate. I am filling your pulpit, filling God's pulpit, and I am very happy that you allow me to be here. It is a wonderful opportunity, and uh, I will look forward down the road to seeing you again. This morning, we're going to speak a little bit about what Jesus does. Um, Jesus raised, if, if you look at some accounts, Jesus raised three people from, from the dead. Uh, and in this passage, after we read some, he raises a daughter of Jairus, the, the uh, synagogue leader. Uh, he raised Lazarus. He raised a, a son from the widow in the town of Nain. So you would ask people, you'd say, how many people did Jesus raise? And the answer would be, to some people, three. But then you start thinking, he raised himself. God raised Jesus up. So really, you could say Jesus raised four people. But it, he healed so many people. Jesus just went through his ministry, and anyone who came to him with some kind of, of a physical or mental affirmity, Jesus did not turn them away. And I can only imagine the Pharisees, you know, today's, uh, let's see, what's wrong with you? Oh, you got an arm. Uh, today's not arm day. Tomorrow's arm day. Uh, before tomorrow, today's we're just going to do legs. Tomorrow we're going to do arms. Uh, call your insurance company, you know, see if you can get pre-approval, and of course uh, you'll be responsible for any copay. Jesus didn't do that. When you look at what Jesus did, he did things like words that were associated with him were instantly, and, and the same with Peter. He was at the gate, the beautiful gate. He saw a, someone there, and it says, instantly, the lame man jumped up, his legs and ankles were healed, and he walked. That is what you associate with Jesus, instant, immediate, as is the scripture here for this morning. Let's begin here. Um, and w <clears throat> a good tip when you read scripture a lot of times. Go back and see what happened a little bit before this t took place. If we go back just a little, we will find that Jesus really um, got his first evangelist healed and up and running. He was on the uh, Gentile side, the east side of the uh, Sea of Galilee, and he healed a man whose name was Legion because there were so many spirits in him. And Jesus uh, cast them out. And what's interesting uh, about that is when he went over, he saw someone, he saw uh, a man that, that was, dis, was disrobed, he cut himself. And I always looked at this as, uh, here's Jesus, they went over to that side of the lake, which was the Gentile side. Probably it was only Jesus that got out of the boat because the apostles probably were afraid that they would defile themselves in standing on Gentile property. So Jesus gets out, and as he is approaching this, uh, this man, the demons shouted to him, what do you want with us, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. It is ironic that these demons that were in this guy recognized Jesus for who he was, but yet a lot of the people around Jesus didn't recognize him for who he was. I thought that was just, you know, a little bit backwards, but Jesus went and he healed this man, and the man, of course, like so many, wanted to go with him. But he said to him, go home to your own people 
and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell his story. The first evangelist that Jesus sent out was a demon-possessed man that Jesus healed. So if you ever think that you're not able or that you're not equipped or if you're not good enough to go out and evangelize in Jesus' name, remember this story. The first person that Jesus sent out just a very little bit before was a totally demon-possessed person. So the man went out and the people were amazed. Now our story begins. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, that would be the western side of of the Sea of Galilee, and it would be on the the, uh, the, uh, Jewish, the Israeli uh, area. It says that a a large crowd followed him. They went around the lake and they, when he got there, here, there was this crowd. When you are in the far north of the Sea of Galilee, and the Sea of Galilee really is a freshwater lake. It's not a sea that has salt in it. But when you're up on the really the far northern end where Jesus was here, it's possible that you get in your boat and you come over and people just walk around the northern end. They were so amazed that he was able to heal this man legion and they were amazed. And it says a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Now one of the synagogue leaders, a synagogue leader back in Jesus' time, the leader was a, a layman, he was not a priest, Uh, He usually was not a Levite, but he was a layman whose responsibilities were administrative. He looked after the building and he supervised the worship service, providing all the things that were needed. And really, he was a very important man in this synagogue here, Jairus. So uh, he came up to Jesus and he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, please, he says, my little daughter is dying. Please come, put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. What faith this man has. It impressed Jesus so much that he said to him, Jesus, he said uh, he went with him. So Jesus followed Jairus and they started pressing through the large crowd. And I often wonder, like, you know, it would be like anybody has been to New York City walking up and down the sidewalks or if you've been somewhere when a a, a sporting event or some kind of big event where there's a few thousand people, you just stand up and everybody heads towards the door. It's a big crowd. It's a large crowd. And it could press against you. Well, this this was most of Jesus' life. He had crowds around him. It says, um, a large crowd followed and pressed around him, but there was a woman there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. This poor young lady, Uh, This was a flow of blood issue, a menstrual issue. And unlike today, there's not, there weren't a lot of things that, that she could use to help her. Uh, She has, uh, she, she very possibly was not married because no one could touch her. They would become unclean. If she's not married, she would not have sex. She would not have children. She really wasn't allowed to be in a home, as it were, because she would defile the things that she touched because a a perpetual uh, issue of blood makes people and things unclean. So when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Now you talk about coming forward to Jesus. Look at this lady as a really good example. She was down to her last card. 
She, she went to the doctors, and then the doctors would consult this thing that, that was there. It was a book called the Talmud, and it had different rules and things in it that the Jewish people looked at. One of the rules for, for her, if you have a perpetual flow of blood, was to find an ostrich egg, roast it, and then spread the ashes in water and drink. You're in, like, you're in downtown Israel here. Where are you gonna find an ostrich egg? You know, so sometimes these, these remedies and things were really very uh, proper. They, they did not help her. And the worst part of it, it says that she spent all the money that she had. Instead of getting better, she grew worse. Uh, that may happen today. You know, if they cannot find out, we prayed in Sunday school for people that, that, that their infirmities would be diagnosed and that they would be healed. But it, sometimes it takes a while. Doctors eliminate sometimes what it isn't before they really find out what it is. Well, this lady did everything she could. She was down to her last card. She was down to her last play. And she just thought to herself, she had heard about Jesus. Maybe someone told her about Jesus. And she just said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Oh, now the, playing the, her last little card here really came at a price because it's a small town. People would know her. And here she is trying to press through the crowd to get to uh, undoubtedly the most important man to come through that town in a long time. You know, somebody recognizes her and they all, unclean, unclean. People would turn around and she would be treated pretty much just like a leper, beaten, stomped on, driven away. She would have no chance to ever approach Jesus. And when we talked to the people we were, we were in, in uh, over in Israel, the, some of the, uh, uh, the rabbis said, like, when, when Jesus, when you have a, a cloak on, you have your, your tunic on, your dress, at the very bottom of the, the fringe of the tunics are these little talits that hang down. They're like little strings that are tied at the end. And they use those whenever they are in prayer. Well, it's very possible that she was knocked down onto the ground and she was reaching out and maybe the only thing that she could touch, it talks about touching the hem of Jesus' robe. It probably was the very bottom because here she was laying down and reaching out and able to just touch maybe one of those talits that were hanging down. All this is going on. Jesus is so busy. He's got a mission. The daughter of one of the most important people in the town was near death. And as far as, as the people around Jesus were concerned, they don't have time to mess with this. Yeah, she's been like that all along. You got bigger fish to fry over here than dealing with somebody like this. So this is what this woman was up against. You look at her final deal, her final last bit of, of desperation, she thought about Jesus. That's a good lesson for us. Don't, don't despair. Like we are hearing so many suicides that are being here now. I just think that if maybe those people, if any of them, young people, maybe a little older people, if they would just have somebody talk to them, tell them about Jesus, tell them that there is hope, that they don't need to be so despondent and, and so discouraged. They could talk about this lady. She had a, a flow of blood for 12 years, and yet, Jesus came into her life. She sought Jesus out. And when she found him, and here, that word again, immediately her bleeding stopped. If, if we could just get to some people and, and tell them, and as I would tell you, an invitation uh, to come to Jesus, we don't have to go through crowds. We don't have to worry about getting beat down here at your beautiful sanctuary. We just have to have the want to 
to come to Jesus. As she said, if I just touch his clothes, oh, I know that I will be healed. That is such faith. I, I, I read this sometimes and I think, I wish I had that kind of faith where I could say, you know what, Jesus? I, I'm not sure that this is going to happen. I'm praying for this thing to be, or I'm praying for a, a someone that, that needs your touch, Lord. And, and I just, I just, I know that if you do this, I know that if you touch them, I know that if I just come to you or get them to come to you, I know that you can heal them. You can begin restoring them. I know this. And, and I just think sometimes my faith is dwarfed by people like this. Jairus, my daughter is, is near death. If you come and lay your hands on her, she will be healed. Immediately Jesus says, then let's go. He saw the faith. There were times Jesus said even he was amazed by people's faith. And I think to myself, I want to be like that. I want to, to amaze Jesus with the amount of faith I have. But I just think, you know, uh, I still have, sometimes I think I just still have a ways to go. But we, we call it a Christian walk. It means that you are not stopping, that you are walking. Sometimes your walk is little peepee steps like this with the hope that someday you can jump and abound in Jesus' grace and mercy. So, this lady, she says, if I could just touch his clothes, she did. She reached out, she touched the hem of his garment as other people, other scripture writers talk about. Immediately her bleeding was stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Imagine that. Immediately, the blood stopped. Immediately, the cramps, anything that she was feeling along with those, all of that stopped. And she may have been laying down on the ground. She may have been like getting stepped on or stepped around by people, but she laid there and she knew immediately, I am healed. It's been 12 years. It might have been half of her life that she has been dealing with this disorder. Her life was just a mess because of it, because of the laws that the Jewish people had. Well now, immediately, her bleeding stopped. At once, here again, immediately, at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him the woman was healed because God graciously determined to heal her through the power that was active in Jesus. Um, this is uh, a little bit different here. Uh, Jesus kept, he stopped, and he looked around to see who had done it. I mean, other than a pickpocket, most of the time you feel like you got like pickpocketed or something. You, you usually don't turn around to see who's touching you in a big crowd. But Jesus stopped. He wanted to make a point here. He says, he turned around to, into, into the crowd and he asked, who touched my clothes? Boy, that, the, the, the apostles had to think, is, uh, that's a rhetorical question. Come on, Jesus, you're on an important mission, and what do you mean who touched your clothes? It could have been any one of, of 30 people that are around here. Who touched my clothes? Let's just, let's just keep going here. Come on. Let's get to Jairus' daughter. Well, Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. He was not going to, to give this up. He, he had a point to make, and he was going to make it. You know, uh, instead of the unclean woman, and this is reversal, 
here. And this is what Jesus does. Instead of the unclean woman who have, was afraid to touch anybody for how long, instead of her unclean uh, body, and if she would have touched Jesus, the law of the Jews would say that her unclean body would touch Jesus and make Jesus unclean. That was the way things worked. But that's not how Jesus worked. By, by touching her with her unclean body and touching Jesus' clean apparel, his tunic, his hem, Jesus made her clean. That's backwards. But that's what Jesus does. You know, people reach out and they touch him, and, and none of us are, are, you know, perfect or, you know, uh, un, very clean enough to touch Jesus. We go to Jesus with our unclean bodies, our unclean thoughts, our unclean actions, and we just say, Jesus, here I am. Take me as I am because this is how I am. And, and if I wait to get perfect and I wait to come to you, then I'll never come to you. And that's an excuse that some people have. It's like, well, why don't you come to, oh, oh, I can't come to church. I haven't been to church for so long, and I just feel like, you know, I'm just, I'm just such a sinner that I just can't come. And I'll say, when you come in and you walk into the sanctuary of the church and you look around, however many people in there, that's how many sinners you're going to see. So you're in good company. A church is a place where sinners congregate to love and worship Jesus Christ just as they are. Well... Jesus kept looking around to see who'd done it. Then the woman, knowing what happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Okay, so this is two people already in this little passage. Jairus and now this woman. Jesus was going to help both of them. But how did they approach him whenever he was looking at them? Yeah, hey, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, it's me. You know me. Come on. Yeah, hey. They fell at his feet, both of them, laying prostrate, laying down in a vulnerable position. That's what means laying down uh, with your head down and your hands down. You are in the most vulnerable position that you could be in. And yet both of these people in this story, Jairus and this woman, both of them, and, and the scripture says here, fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Imagine going from the outhouse, and then you're cl clean by Jesus, and here you are up at the penthouse, and then Jesus calling you out, and you fall down again at his feet in fear. Now you're back down here. What a motor or a, a Ferris wheel ride that Jesus takes these people on. Sometimes they're at the bottom, other times they're at the top. They just keep going around and circling around. Well, this woman was trembling with fear. She told him the whole truth. And here comes something now that Jesus does that's nowhere else in the Gospels. He called her, and what does the scripture say? Daughter. Jesus uses the word daughter he is going to heal a daughter. When he's going up at the end, uh, uh, up, the, uh, up the Via Della Rosa, he says to the, he calls them daughters of Jerusalem. Nowhere does he look at one person, one woman, because that was his term. Even with his mom, he would say, woman, why are you talking to me? Why are you asking me this? That was the, the term. Here we are all hung up on pronouns and things like that, you know. Jesus just met people where they were. Woman, man, boy, girl. Well, here he used a term, daughter. The only place where he uses this term, looking at one woman. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Go in place. Go your, go your way. See, true freedom, true freedom, in this case, physically, 
She already had the faith. All Jesus did here was to fix her physically, which he did immediately. He says, daughter, your faith has healed you. True freedom comes from Jesus. True peace. He says to her, go in peace and be freed from your suffering. That hasn't changed. What Jesus told that young lady right there, he, could, he would tell us. He would look out over here and he would look at the ladies and he would say, daughters. He would look at the men and he may say, sons. Because if you have Jesus Christ in your heart and you are a believer in the one true God, Jesus, and God, the Holy Spirit, if you are believers, then you are a son or a daughter in Christ. You're, you're brothers and sisters with each other. You are not alone. That's the message that we have to get out to people, that they are not alone like this lady, they have every reason. She had every reason to just lay down and probably not much longer she would have been dead, whether it be the blood or somebody, somebody beats her and kills her or she just finally gives up hope and, and just lays down and doesn't get up. But she had faith. Jesus even commended her. He called her daughter and then he says, your faith has made you well. And, and at this point, she could look up and say, yeah, Jesus, I've always had the faith, and maybe it's made me well. But you know what? You had a big part in this too, you, you know, Jesus. You've healed me too, you know. So it was, it was both of them. But Jesus wouldn't have been able to do what he did if she didn't do what she did. I want to be healed. I, 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 nothing is working. I'm broke. I'm, uh, you know, abandoned, segregated out of, of all human, uh, unclean I am, everything. But I can find Jesus. I have to be able, if I can just touch his clothes. How she knew that, we don't know. She had faith. This was someone that Jesus commended in front of everybody. When he said, stop who touched me, he had a plan. This was a teaching moment and Jesus wasn't gonna let it get past. This lady, and you know her around here, obviously she's been here for 12 years, you've had to, to know that she was unclean and all, but her faith has healed her. Go now in peace and be free. You want true freedom? Go to Jesus. That's the story of here. From the time he came across the lake and he wanted to go with Jairus to the time he turned around and said, who touched me? And the lady came out and he says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free. Be free of your suffering. This is what Jesus can do. Now, we're going to have a hymn. We're going to have the final hymn here. Uh, Softly and Tenderly is going to be played. And as we're playing and, and doing this song, I want to impress on all of us. Is there something that's in you, something that is digging at you, something that is like this lady, something that's been eating at you, something for you, maybe you need prayer. Maybe you need uh, a first time salvation. Well, this is the invitation right here. We are going to have a, a, an altar call, where people are going to come up and there'll be people here to pray with you. You can kneel here on the steps and pray if you would like. And so as we begin, we'll have a
piano, the music here. I'm going to stand up here. There'll be some deacons that stand up here as well, if you all would come up. And let's just pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to do this. Just like this woman, there are people that are in trouble, and they want to come to you. Please allow them now to get out of their pews, to get on, to, to, to walk up front here and say, I want to pray, to kneel down and just ask for prayer. We can do this, Lord, because we know that you're here and that you can do it. You can help people. So please, stir people's hearts right now and allow them to come forward.